urban company decides to uh, mm. expand to UAE, right? Yeah. It's a daunting task in itself, expanding Absolutely. to different regions. And it's almost like a startup because you're pre-revenue yeah. in a yeah. new market. Yeah. How is that experience? And are there any learnings along the way that is probably you can take motivation or inspiration from your previous role or how does it work? Absolutely, yeah. Uh, very exciting journey. I can, I can still okay. remember knocking on the doors of random customers to have an interview just uh -huh. to have a chat and you know nine out of ten times they're like get the hell out of here <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that that is uh quite a journey mm -hmm. but i think uh maybe let me start talking about why we chose this region right sure. why we chose dubai and uae so the oldest market that we have been in is india right. and if you try to see the top 10 indian cities right mm -hmm. uh bangaluru bombay etc uh, it has a population of close to 300 million Right, it's it's similar to United States population, so it's that big. Yes. It's a massive market, right? And Dubai, the city alone, has a three three and a half million population. So that's like one and a half percent mm -hmm. of the top ten Indian cities. Yes. So, so you'd see the scale of the market is very very small, but when you talk about market share, which is how much revenue or how much uh, money can you make out of the market. Uh -huh. Uh, that is 20 times, 20% 20 mm -hmm. of the top 10 Indian cities. Okay. So 1% of the population in UAE compared to India is 20 times more valuable. Is it right? because of the willingness to pay or? It's both. Okay. It's, it's willingness to pay is one, uh, of course. Second is the frequency of transactions. Mm. Uh, it varies when you get into a market which is all migrant population, all working population. Yes. Right? And it's similar to, we are also in the US. So in US, if you take the tier two cities, Dallas, Austin, mm -hmm. etc. Uh, if you compare the five biggest tier two cities in the US, right? Uh, in terms of population, that is also close to six to five X of Dubai. Okay. But in terms of value, it's still 20 to 30% uh, mm -hmm. of the value that those cities will give. When it comes to a city with a much higher population, do you find that you have to do a lot more prospecting in your marketing? Uh, I don't think that the population, if what really matters is how big is your market, mm -hmm. right? So in a population of 10 million, my, or for the, for the business that you're running, your relevant population might only be like 100,000, right? right? Or for a population of 10 million, your relevant population might be, again, 10 million. Mm -hmm. So it really depends on who your customer is. So you're not really looking at 300 million as your pool, you're not comparing 300 versus 3.1, you're actually, or 3.6, you're looking at... Actually, the market, yeah. Just the market. Just the market, yeah. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. And did it help, for example, if you check the demographic spread over here, definitely there are Indians, so Absolutely. they associate with the, the product already yeah. because they use it back home, so it's much easier. It's For yeah. example, it's like Deliveroo in, in, in the UK, and yeah. people use it here, they use it in Australia also. Absolutely. So there yeah. is that brand association. Did that also help you... Uh, a smooth transition into the yeah, market? Absolutely. So so coming back to the original question of why did we start the UAE market, uh -huh. right? Is number one is of course the scale. The scale is massive. Per customer, mm -hmm. we are able to get 20%, 20x the revenue okay. of what we would have gotten uh, in our original India market. Mm -hmm. The second reason is this, because 90% of the population in this country uh, is migrant population. right? And it's not that it's first generation immigrant, unlike Singapore or the US, uh, these are all people who are born in different countries and they have come to this country. Yeah. So what happens is when people travel to a different country uh, and they have not been born and brought up in that country, they bring their cultures with them, mm -hmm. right? Uh, that is what makes Dubai very, very different. And back home in India, urban company is a massive market. Yeah. We are already sitting at like 15, 16, 17% market penetration uh, in the categories Incredible. that we lead. Yeah. Yeah. And the reason why we decided to come here is because we know 20, 25% of the population is Indian. Yeah. They're born and raised in India. Yeah. So that helped us acquire, you know, the initial set of 1,000 or 10,000 or so users where we can really iterate on our product, uh, mm -hmm. perfect our product, um, and understand other user segments better. It's a nice way of like <clears throat> piggybacking off already understanding users, perhaps people that have already 
quite familiar with your products Absolutely, from, yeah. from India. Yeah. But then also they're a little bit integrated into culture here. Yeah. So it's just like a bit of a stepping stone between Absolutely. like Indian culture, Dubai culture. Absolutely. It's yeah. middle ground. Absolutely. It is a middle ground. And this did have its challenges as well. Uh, so the advantage is that a lot of Indian people, they already know Urban Company from back home. Uh, so there's no not a lot of resistance to use a brand which they've ho- used back yes. home and yes. know the name of. Uh, but so these are learnings and mistakes that we did. But right now we have changed. So see the market in the Middle East, especially Dubai, is also very mixed, mm-hmm. right? There are Europeans, there are Arabs, uh, there are other people from Asia, and what we took time to understand is that especially in a B two C market. Yeah. Uh, in a service like home services, personal services, uh-huh. uh, an Arab versus a European versus a South Asian have very different requirements. Right. Right. What might make sense or what is a good quality or what is a good price for an Arab varies or is very different than what it is for a European versus uh-huh. a South Asian versus an Asian. Mm-hmm. And I think that took us a lot of time to figure out. Uh, because we also came, you know, with the same product that exists in, in back in India. Mm-hmm. We bought the same product here. Yeah. So, like, an example I can give, uh, perhaps a bit funny, is, so we also have this beauty services, right? Okay. And in India, the biggest category within the beauty service is the waxing service. Waxing is usually <laughs> hair removal in the pocket. Okay. okay. I see where and, this is going. <laughs> <laughs> right? And yeah. when we, uh, so that's, that's like a hero product that yes. sells the most. Uh-huh. And we enter Dubai, we start selling it, uh, a few quarters go by, right. and it just doesn't sell, uh-huh. right? Oh, uh, yeah. Everything else is going great. And uh, we do interviews and interviews, try to understand, yeah. run data. You know, there are analysts sitting on verifying user data, this and that. Uh, later on, what we understood is, see, although India is like a huge chunk of population, mm-hmm. there are a large proportion of Europeans, a large pr- proportion of Arabs. Mm-hmm. And... Arab and European women don't have a lot of hair on their body, <laughs> right? And okay. it is acceptable in their culture and even in some societies mandated that you yeah. get a laser treatment done when you're oh, a teenager yes. or when you're young. Uh, so laser treatment just removes all the yeah, hair. It's a one-time cost and then lifetime Yeah, treat. it's a one-time <laughs> cost. There's, there's also some European countries <clears throat> where like there's no shaving. Yeah. <laughs> for, for, for women. It doesn't exist that. in That's that culture. <laughs> yeah. so, but anyway, this is turning yeah. into a different podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so that is like one example of how things can be very different mm-hmm. for uh, a region where, which has a lot of population or mixed population, uh, especially not people who have like first generation immigrants, mm-hmm. but people who have come from different countries and settled here. Yeah. Uh, so that was very challenging for us to understand. And okay even in marketing that varies a lot. So your marketing strategies, uh, which this is a mistake that I see a lot of new tech startups make when they enter the space, Uh is that a message that is convincing or uh, that makes sense for an Arab versus an Asian has to be very different. It's not just the language. It's just different. Their priorities are different. The way they think is different. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you really have to customize your products, messages, uh, specifically to the audience, mm-hmm. right? So, yeah. So that's something that we have learned and iterated over time. Mm-hmm. 